We loved them in our favorite Lifetime movies, and we were heartbroken when they passed. These are the Lifetime stars who sadly died. Anne Heche's untimely demise was one of the most shocking celebrity deaths of 2022. In August of that year, the 53-year-old was involved in two car accidents, the second of which ended in her crashing into someone's house and her car bursting into flames. After being trapped for 45 minutes, she was rescued from the burning vehicle, but it was sadly too late. She suffered catastrophic injuries, including smoke inhalation and severe brain damage. Accordingly, she was declared brain dead days after the crash and was taken Taken off life support, an organ donor, in death, she was able to save the lives of others. At the time of her passing, she had completed work on the Lifetime movie Girl in Room 13, a film that deals with sex trafficking. Following her death, there was speculation as to whether the network would go ahead and air the film. However, Lifetime Vice President Amy Winter confirmed that the late actor would have wanted people to see the movie. Heche was a survivor of child sexual abuse herself, so the project was particularly important to her. Variety reported on a discussion panel in which Winter stated, We all started to make a film that would bring attention to the appalling issue of human sex trafficking. We hope that this film moves you and that you are just as inspired as Anne was to help us with our mission to stop violence against women. With a career spanning almost 40 years, Suzanne Douglas received praise and plaudits for her eclectic acting roles. She was lauded for her performance as Whitney Houston's mom, Sissy, in the 2015 Lifetime biopic, Whitney. Discussing the project with NJ.com, Douglas said that the tragic role resonated with her as a mother, but the complexity of the part was compounded by her own chance encounter with Sissy, who had previously voiced opposition to any biopics about her late daughter. She admitted, just as a mother, I'm thinking to myself, if I had lost my most precious gift, my daughter, how would that make me feel? So I wanted, out of respect, her to just see me as a fan. As I extended my hand, I simply said, thank you for your work. I can only imagine that if I had lost my child, yeah. that I would be mourning probably for the rest of my life. Sadly, Douglas's own life was cut short when she was in her prime. A few months before she died, she discussed her health problems on Facebook, revealing that she had been diagnosed with cancer twice and was subsequently hosting a wellness event. She died of cancer in July 2021, aged 64. On Facebook, her cousin, Angie T, paid tribute to her and discussed the lasting influence she had on black actors. T wrote, I can remember growing up. There weren't very many black actresses who had starring roles, but there was my cousin with the lead role in Tap, starring alongside great dancers such as Gregory Hines and Sam Davis Jr. In addition to a role in Lifetime's dramedy Devious Maids, Eddie Hassel appeared in Hollywood films such as The Kids Are All Right and Jobs. Unfortunately, the promising young performer's life and career came to an abrupt end when he was shot dead in 2020. The actor was visiting his girlfriend in Texas when he was fatally shot in a suspected carjacking. He was 30. Police later confirmed that he was killed in a random robbery. In 2021, 18-year-old Dijon Antone, who is believed to have shot Hassel before stealing his car, was arrested on suspicion of murder and is currently awaiting trial. Hassel and his girlfriend, Elizabeth Martin, were known for their interest in creepy and gothic aesthetics. On Instagram, Martin paid a heartbreaking tribute to her late partner, accompanied by bittersweet photos of the couple engaging in some quirky art in the forest. She wrote, I loved you more than the sky in Texas. You made me more mad than anyone I've ever met, and I loved every ounce of you for it. In an interview with CBS News, the actor's parents, Sandy and David, expressed their disbelief at their son's sudden and violent death. Sandy said, I believe they said he got shot at 1.50 a.m. I talked to him at 12.45 a.m. And the last thing he told me was, Happy Halloween, Mama. I love you. My life changed forever because somebody did a stupid thing for nothing. A veteran of stage and screen, Cicely Tyson was renowned for her enigmatic presence. Famed for her roles in acclaimed series such as Roots and How to Get Away with Murder, she also appeared on the Lifetime Network, starring in an adaptation of Horton Foote's The Trip to Bountiful in 2014. Additionally, Tyson had appeared in the Broadway production of Foote's classic play, portraying protagonist Carrie Watts. Chatting about the project at the TV Academy, Tyson said that she was initially hesitant regarding a Lifetime adaptation of the play, for which she won a Tony Award. She said, I mean, look at this theater. How can you go from this expansive, broad character that reaches to the last row in the balcony to just a miniature screen? How do you do that? In time, however, she came to embrace director Michael Wilson's artistic vision. The Hollywood Reporter gave the adaptation a positive review, highlighting Tyson's majestic performance. 
Sadly, the actor, who was famed for her apparent Benjamin Button-esque agelessness, died in 2021. She was 96. Tributes poured in throughout the spectrum of the entertainment world, exemplifying her transcendent nature. Vanessa Williams, who co-starred with Tyson in both the Broadway and Lifetime adaptations of The Trip to Bountiful, penned a moving tribute to her in The Guardian. She wrote, Cicely was our Meryl Streep, a consummate actor in iconic films. Williams also expressed that acting alongside Tyson was one of the greatest joys of her career. By far one of the most iconic and charismatic actors, Raquel Welch rose to fame in the 1966 Hammer production, One Million Years BC, in which she famously donned a fur bikini. Later in her career, she proved her acting chops when she began doing more TV work. In 2013, she starred as Donatella Versace's aunt, Lucia, in the Lifetime movie House of Versace. Although the famously vivacious star was initially hesitant about taking on the role of the understated Lucia, she told the New York Post that she was inspired by Donatella actor Gina Gershon to take on the challenge. Regarding her devotion to her craft, the then 73-year-old said she had no intention of slowing down in her golden years, viewing performance as the perfect respite from reality. She explained, I just have a lot of energy, and I knew I had to use it. I wanted to be in the performing arts. I didn't think that reality was all that interesting. The real world was was fraught with disappointment. I thought it would be so much more fun if you could be dancing and singing. Following her final acting role in 2017, Welch retired from the public eye and died in 2023. Aged 82, she had been living with Alzheimer's, a diagnosis that she kept a secret. The Lifetime reality series Bring It focused on the trials and tribulations of Mississippi dance troupe The Dancing Dolls, coached by the formidable Diana Miss D. Williams. Shakira Gatlin was one such member of the talented troupe, but the teenager's life came to a devastating end. In September 2021, Gatlin's 40-year-old father was gunned down as he sat in his truck, and just five months later, she met the same fate, having been shot dead by a young boy in Jackson. Investigators confirmed that Gatlin was not targeted and was sadly the victim of an accidental shooting, the result of the boy mishandling a gun. In an eerie instance of foreshadowing, Gatlin paid tribute to her late father on Facebook mere days before her death, poignantly declaring that she knew he was watching over her. On her own Facebook account, Gatlin's mom, Erica Robinson, expressed her sorrow and disbelief at losing both her husband and daughter within a matter of months. She made an impassioned plea to end gun violence, writing, I just can't catch a break. They deserved to live. A GoFundMe was set up to help pay for Gatlin's funeral expenses, with donations reaching $15,458. Williams attended the memorial service and paid tribute to the sadly departed dancer on Instagram, writing, I promise that every time we perform from here on out, I will always remember that it's showtime. I named you that because, baby, you knew how to put on a show. With a career spanning over four decades, Kirstie Alley was a staple of both the small and big screen. The acting vet was best known for her role as the ambitious Rebecca Howe in Cheers, and for starring alongside fellow Scientologist John Travolta in the Look Who's Talking films. Although she was famed for taking on comedic parts, her final role was a decidedly more serious and somber affair. In 2020, she appeared on our screens for the last time, starring in the Lifetime movie You Can't Take My Daughter. The film is based on the true story of Annalyn Megason, who fought against the person who sexually assaulted her from gaining custody of her child. Discussing the project with People, Ali said that she hoped the film would raise awareness of the important issue and, ultimately, help rectify antiquated custody laws. She admitted, I didn't even think it was true. It was so outlandish and so horrific. Then I talked to the director and I found out that it was true and I thought it was an important story. In December 2022, Ali died at the age of 71. She had recently been diagnosed with colon cancer, something she opted to conceal from the public. Travolta, who also lost his wife, Kelly Preston, to cancer, paid tribute to his late friend and co-star on Instagram. He wrote, Kirstie was one of the most special relationships I've ever had. I love you, Kirstie. I know we will see each other again. Acting great Ruby Dee was much loved for her roles on screen and stage. She starred in two films by veteran director Spike Lee, Jungle Fever and Do the Right Thing, acting alongside her husband of almost 60 years, Ossie Davis. She appeared in a number of Lifetime productions, including 2001's Taking Back Our Town and the harrowing 2009 movie America, penned by Rosie O'Donnell. 
Her penultimate work was in the 2013 Lifetime movie Betty and Coretta, which was about the relationship between the widows of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Taking a step back from the cameras, the then 90-year-old actor narrated the story. Essence gave the film a positive review, emphasizing the skillful and soulful narration of Dee, who was herself a longtime civil rights activist. Speaking to the crisis in 2007, Dee addressed her longevity. The impulse still lives. It's so strong. It's so strong that when the body dies, the impulse to live escapes, as long as the life force has something that can accommodate it. In 2014, she died peacefully, aged 91. On Instagram, Spike Lee paid tribute to both Dee and her husband, who preceded her in death by almost a decade. He wrote, Ruby and Aussie served as a living example that one could be an artist and an activist too. That one could be an artist and still deal with what it means to be a black woman and a black man in these United States. Ashley Ross, also known by her nickname Minnie, was the star of Lifetime reality series Little Women Atlanta. Chatting to Madame Noir, Ross said that she hoped the series would highlight the struggles and prejudice faced by those with dwarfism. As a youngster growing up in Atlanta, Ross explained she was subjected to cruel, ableist taunts. She said, I would try to get a job, and they wouldn't hire me because I was a little person. They thought that it was a disability and that I couldn't do the job, but I was like, yes, I can. I can do anything that a normal-sized person can do. However, the TV star, who is a talented hairstylist, stated that she also wanted to emphasize the fun and joyful moments of her life. In 2020, Ross sadly died in what her management termed a hit-and-run car accident. She was 34. Police later confirmed that the crash was caused by Ross swerving off the road and colliding with another vehicle. The reality star succumbed to blunt force trauma. Later that year, she was honored by her Little Women Atlanta co-stars. In a season six preview obtained by People, a tearful money ponders. Have you thought about how it's gonna be without Minnie now? This, of course, wasn't the only touching moment in the preview. Abira also paid a poignant tribute to the late star, stating, Our friendship meant a lot to me because we started in the fire, but we walked through it together. A celebrated character actor, Patricia Neal's career began in the golden age of Hollywood, starring in 50s classics such as The Day the Earth Stood Still and A Face in the Crowd. However, she was best known for acting alongside Paul Newman in Martin Ritt's 1963 Western HUD, for which she received the Oscar for Best Actress. Despite a glittering career, Neal's life was beset by illness and tragedy. Having wed author Roald Dahl in 1953, the couple's seven-year-old daughter, Olivia, died of measles in 1962. Three years later, a pregnant Neal suffered multiple strokes, leaving her in a coma. This ultimately affected her ability to work due to ensuing speech and memory issues. Eventually, she recovered with the help of her husband, though according to the New York Times, a surgeon once darkly remarked, I'm not sure whether or not I've done her a favor. In a 1971 interview with The Guardian, Neal reflected on her illness and her daughter's death, revealing that these harrowing experiences had shifted her views on religion. She said, I used to believe in God completely, but not now. Not completely anyway do I believe, not since Olivia's death and my stroke. I believe in life, all right. I believe that the country is wonderful and friends and trees and everything. I'm not sure about God. In 2009, she made her final acting appearance in the Lifetime film Flying By. Alongside Billy Ray Cyrus, she died of lung cancer the following year, aged 84. Marky Post was best known for her role as Christine Sullivan on the 80s sitcom Night Court, playing the longtime frenemy of prosecutor Dan Fielding, a TV mainstay. She also starred in The Fall Guy, Scrubs, and Chicago PD. The actor appeared in two Lifetime Christmas films, 2017's Four Christmases and a Wedding and 2019's Christmas Reservations, which was her final acting appearance. The second festive film starred and was produced by none other than Sabrina the Teenage Witch alum, Melissa Joan Hart. In an interview with TV Insider, Hart said that she was dead set on casting Post due to her striking resemblance to fellow TV star Gigi Rice, who plays her sister in the movie. She declared, I had really wanted to work with Marky Post again. She had played my mom in Holidays in Handcuffs. There were roles for two sisters in this, and I thought Marky and Gigi look identical. At the time of filming, Post had been diagnosed with cancer and was undergoing chemotherapy treatments. She died in 2021, aged 70. Hart was devastated by the demise of her former co-star and festive collaborator. Penning a poignant eulogy to post on Instagram, she wrote, I'm heartbroken to lose an angel here on earth. My dear friend and TV mother, Marky Post, is finally at rest. I can't describe what she meant to me, the friendship we had, and the kindness she demonstrated for me. 
Olympia Dukakis was famed for her eclectic roles, appearing in weepy such as Steel Magnolias and Mr. Holland's Opus. A lifelong ally of the LGBTQ community, she starred in the 90s adaptation of Armistead Maupin's queer classic, Tales of the City, as well as its 2019 Netflix reboot, playing trans woman Anna Madrigal. But not all her roles were heartwarming and wholesome. In 2014, she took on a decidedly different project, starring in the Lifetime thriller Big Driver. An adaptation of Stephen King's book of the same name, Variety lamented that the arguably seedy and exploitative film did a disservice to a performer of Dukakis's gravitas. Despite the poor reviews, the acting legend had no intention of slowing down, telling Strombo that same year that she was riding high on an unwavering lust for life. I guess that's one of the great things about being alive is when you just still feel like you're excited to do the thing I am, you love. I am, and there are things that um, really matter to me. After several months of ill health, Dukakis died in 2021, aged 89. In 2023, the Strand Theater paid homage to the late stage and screen star with Remembering Olympia. Speaking to the Bay Area reporter, Dukakis's brother, Apollo, reflected on the impact she had on the LGBTQ community. She often said that Anna Madrigal was her favorite of all her screen and TV roles. The unconditionally and non-judgmental way Anna had with her friends and the world was a validation to the LGBTQ community. It was maybe the first time they saw someone who reflected their lives on mainstream television in a positive and life-affirming way. A Hollywood veteran, Martin Landau made a name for himself as a multifaceted character actor. With a career spanning a whopping seven decades, his roles were diverse and disparate. Often depicting mysterious and enigmatic characters, he played everyone from the villainous Leonard of Alfred Hitchcock's classic North by Northwest to the elusive yet tragic Bella Lugosi in Tim Burton's Ed Wood biopic. A testament to his versatility as a performer, he even made the transition to Lifetime movies in his late 80s. In 2013, he starred in The Anna Nicole Story, depicting the titular tragic model's elderly billionaire husband, J. Howard Marshall. In an interview with Reuters, the actor said that, as an older person himself, the role resonated with him. Subsequently, he discussed taking on the challenge of humanizing a man who was often the butt of the joke in the media. He explained, Everyone thinks of Marshall as an old geezer who just picked up Anna Nicole Smith in a strip club, but nobody knows that much about him. He was a Yale Law School graduate and trusted advisor to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I wanted to portray the fact that she actually gave him life. She rejuvenated him. The following year, he appeared in yet another movie for the network, playing the father of a bigamous Mormon on the run and outlaw prophet, Warren Jeffs. Sadly, Landau died in 2017, after succumbing to severe internal bleeding. He was 89.